everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. I, as you probably can tell, have not been around, I've not been drawing for the last couple weeks. That's because I was nearing the date of my actuarial exam, which I've been studying for ever since the beginning of June. And I've got a little under 300 hours studied for that. Here is my pile of work and notes. I used up over like an entire pack of notebook paper and practice exams. And anyway, it was really hard. <laughs> it took up all my time and now I am back. So I just took the test on Friday and it's like a written answer test. So I'm not gonna get my results back until mid January apparently, which is kind of nerve wracking. But on the other hand, that means I don't have to worry about it, right? Cause if I fail, then I'll start studying again when I get the results back. And if I pass, then I pass. So back to art, which is exciting. So the very next day I started work on this painting because, you know, I really wanted to get back into the groove and get a feel for things before I came back and made another update video. So I'm done with this. And so here I am. I'm so excited to be here. I, I've just been looking forward to making more videos and doing more art. I'm just so excited. <laughs> so reading my notes from like a month ago because I've got a lot to talk about. So we sort of have some Evolve news. I was so, so excited to see that video that Ergo Josh posted about Evolve. I am so excited that it's getting some more recognition and sort of, I guess, legitimacy within the YouTube art community. And I messaged him about it and I, you know, I just shared my thoughts in his comment section and he came and he commented on one of my videos about Evolve and I feel like my life is kind of made a little bit. <laughs> I'm like fangirling so hard. I, I love his videos so much. Anyway, super excited about that. He has like 10% off, I think, if you sign up for Evolve through his link. So if you want that discount then please go over and sign up if that makes the difference for you or whatever definitely check out his thoughts it's so exciting anyway beyond that so as i've been going through the course i've been washing my brushes every night and i have this the master's brush cleaner which is what i used at a studio that i took lessons at before so i was like well if it's good enough for him it's good enough for me so i got some and it works really well but I found that I was just going through the soap so fast and I didn't really want to pay the amount of money for like another little thing of soap. So I got like a 10 pack of ivory soap, which is not brush soap. It's just, it's just normal soap, but it was like a brush soap alternative that Kevin had suggested in the supplies list. So I felt like I should just try it out. But I do really like having a little container for it. So I just sort of like smushed uh, half of a bar of soap in here and it's been working really well. I think I've done four paintings maybe so far and it's mostly still here. Like before it was like sticking out the top, but I've used up this much and it's lasted a pretty long time. Plus I still have like nine more bars to do the same thing with. And this only cost me about $5. So don't be like me and buy expensive stuff just because it seems like, I don't know, it'll be a better idea. Like these brushes, I probably won't even use them after these lessons. So anyway, I just wanted to share my brush soap experiences. I've also noticed that I've been trying to use like less brushes because when I first started doing these lessons, I was like, okay, so I'll have one big brush for the lights, one big brush for the darks, one small brush for the lights, one small brush for the darks, one teeny tiny brush for the lights, and one teeny tiny brush for the darks so that I can keep things like uncontaminated and super nice and pristine. And then I realized that the more brushes I use, the more brushes I need to wash at the end of the day, which means the more brush soap and money I have to spend and the more time. And now I realize that I'm fine just using like one or two brushes <laughs> every day. I just give it a really good clean uh, with a paper towel and it's all good. These are, I guess these are just things that like, you know, you don't really know why people do things until you're there. 
And I'm just like looking at Kevin, I'm like, why wouldn't you use like all the brushes possible? Because you have so many of them and I have so many of them. Let's just use them all. It turns out it's just a big pain to clean it up and wash them. It's also been really exciting starting to move into finally being able to do the reflections and the highlights and like, you know, cause you can see stuff as an untrained artist, you can see little things in the picture, right? Like there's like that little bit of light in the shadow or that little bit of dark in the light and there's like a really bright spot and whatever. And it felt ugh, kind of torturous to not be able to reflect that in the painting, but now we get to start doing it, which is exciting, but we still have to hold back, which um, it feels interesting. Here's a quote. A lot of your reflections and highlights are not going to be the right value, but you will learn how to get to the right value by doing this. I do feel like it is hard, you know, to let go of your learning path, sort of, and like let someone else take the reins and just, you know, trust them that they're gonna get you to the right place. Anyway, I think something that really spoke to me as I was going through this part of the lessons was an explanation for why we're never satisfied with our own artwork. I feel like in the past, I've always heard people say things like, oh, if you aren't happy with it, that means you're learning or something vague like that. And they just say like, just go get them champ. And I don't know, it never really convinced me. It was more like a, okay, I'll just accept it. That's just the way that the world works and I'll go with it. But I never felt like, yeah, there was a satisfactory explanation until Kevin said it in one of the videos. He says, you're always going to know more than you can produce because you learn as you create the work. Then when you look back at it, you see the things that you could have done. But if you look and see nothing, you haven't learned. And this kind of blew my mind. This, I don't know, I, I guess I just never, I never thought of it like that before. I've been sitting here trying to explain my feelings for like the past 10 minutes and I'm just not sure how to articulate like why this explanation feels so relieving and inspiring to me. I might have to touch on this another time but I think it is interesting food for thought and just, you know, just like an actual explanation for why you aren't satisfied other than just the conclusion of that if you don't see anything wrong with it, then you aren't learning, right? We get to take a couple steps back and realize that the reason why we're unsatisfied at the end is because we are more knowledgeable and more skillful than the artists we were at the beginning of the piece right so like as you work you become better it reminds me of people who have really long web comics and sometimes they go back through and they say like oh man i never would have composed it this way before i never would have drawn my figures like this like my characters have evolved over time and their designs are different now and like oh i wouldn't draw ruffles on a character because like who wants to draw ruffles like 20 times throughout a comic and but they only know all of that because they made these mistakes along the way and so therefore they know to not do it again <laughs> you know what i mean i think that's just it's just so cool how you can gather all this stuff and the most important part is just doing it so i feel like my first painting with my reflections slash highlights was so messy and not very convincing but the feedback on it was all right and it's about following the instructions, not making a pretty painting. Yeah, I was talking to Kevin about this, about like, what do you do if you really feel like you messed up on something and you really want to start over because you feel like, like you just made such a mess out of it? And he said, don't, <laughs> right? Because there's so much to learn you don't have time to go back and do something that you've already done. Like the teachers, they want to see how much you understand the concepts. They don't really care what the painting looks like. They want to make sure that you have the straight edges, the good gradients, that your values are correct on the painting. Like even if it looks messy, even if it looks like trash to you, you know, you're not trying to make something you're going to hang up on the wall. You just want to do enough to demonstrate to the teachers that 
like you got it and you can move on because you're going to learn so much more doing something new than doing the same thing again. So I think I did most of the jug painting here on stream and someone said that this jug painting was the first one that started to look hard. And like, I really felt that, you know, when I first started the course and I looked through these reference pictures, I was just like, I can't understand how I'll possibly be able to get to the level where I can paint like that. But now after doing like 11 or 12 paintings or whatever before this one, I'm just like, oh yeah, I see exactly what I'm supposed to do. I see where the gradients are supposed to go. I can see where a couple highlights would be. And if I just follow all the steps, I know that it'll turn out to the best of my ability. And having this sort of confidence is really weird. Like I've never felt like this before. Like before now, making art, doing practice is like, an anxiety filled moment for me because I'm always like, what if I can't do it? You know, like I know I've drawn like hundreds of figures before, but like, what if I can't do this one? And then sometimes I'm right and I can't do it, which is stressful, but like, I'm never confident about it. I'm never sure like, oh yeah, this is just like another thing and I'll follow the steps and I'll get it. Cause I always wonder like, how do artists do it? You know, how do they take commissions? Like imagine being so confident in your art that you let people pay you tens or hundreds of dollars to deliver them something like, oh my God. Like just thinking about it is so stressful. But now I think I'm starting to get it. You know, once you, develop that confidence once you've done it tens of dozens hundreds of times and it turns out well every time i'm sure you start to get really confident that you can do it again and so just that shift in mindset is just so exciting <laughs> anyway so this is the latest painting painting number 14. so when i first got done with my exam, I was thinking, man, I haven't painted in like three weeks. Am I even really going to remember anything? Should I go back and watch all the videos again? And then I felt like, nah, I should just give it a try. I should like have a little faith in myself and in Kevin for teaching me well and see if I can, you know, whip it out. And I feel like it turned out really well, uh, but apparently this is like the most off base of a painting I've ever been uh, so far. Apparently, I got the wrong values for the shadow color in the stand and also this cone over here, which it's a bit frustrating because like I've never made this kind of mistake before. And also it's kind of shaking my confidence in myself, right? Because like this whole time I've been like, yeah, I can like pick out um, the values. Okay, right? At most I would make like one or two mistakes per painting and I'm like, oh, two whole mistakes on such a big part of the painting. <laughs> it's a little spooky, but I am also excited to be doing more. I mean, I'm doing these paintings so much faster now and I finally have time and I'm really excited to see how far I'll be able to get by the end of my little break from exams. And after I got back from my break, I realized that the days are a lot shorter now and the nights are a lot longer and there's not as much natural daylight. Also, the overhead lights here kind of suck. And overall, it's been a really bad experience painting in the dark, kind of. So I reached out to Kevin and asked him what his favorite lighting setup was. And he suggested a good low cost way for me to put lights in my studio. So I might have that done by next video and I think it'll be really cool to go through that and see if I can recommend it. What I'm looking for in a lighting setup is something that sort of mimics natural sunlight so that the colors are accurate and is also diffuse enough to not have like the white flecks that you get from like a really strong light bulb which would help both with doing the painting and also with taking pictures of the painting afterward. Going through the course and going through the Facebook group, you'll find that being able to take good pictures without glare is a non-trivial problem and I'm hoping that this can be a solution. So overall, Exercise 10 took 6 hours and 26 minutes. Exercise 11 took 7 hours and 12 minutes. Exercise 12 took 4 hours and 35 minutes. Exercise 13 took 7 hours and 54 minutes. And exercise 14 took 5 hours and 48 minutes. 
So if you have any thoughts on Evolve, on learning art, on why we are never satisfied with our own work, please let me know in the comments. Let's discuss it. Let's give me something interesting to talk about next video. Hopefully I'll be bringing you semi-regular updates as I go through the course and also hopefully have time to do some other art for once in my entire life, but that's a hard maybe. If you love Ergo Josh as much as me, go over to my other video and say hi and reply to his comment and show him that we appreciate him. Stay safe and healthy out there and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.